Just quickly to put this in context, uh, this whole process that, have led, that led to the announcement of 350 jobs going at CSIRO and 100 of those in oceans and atmosphere in Hobart, this whole process has been a shambles, a total shambles. It has destroyed CSIRO's, CSIRO's reputation in climate science and more broadly in public good science and I think across the board. It has been noted all around the world and condemned all around the world, as I said in my question yesterday, including by the New York Times editorial. Uh, it has led to what was referred to by senior scientists in CSIRO as a toxic culture within the organisation. No consultation occurred between CSIRO management and senior stakeholders, all of them, who rely on critical work and inputs from CSIRO. And then to top it off, the CEO, who is only on a two-year contract, and we haven't found out why it was only a two-year contract yet, because five years is the standard, I understand, for CSIRO, has made comments publicly that have led to the devaluation of the work that a number of these career scientists have contributed, not just uh, to CSIRO but to us all in this country. In fact, many of these scientists were campaigning, not campaigning is the wrong word, many of these scientists were ringing the bell on climate change decades ago before it was recognised. And they're now being told they're not needed anymore. And just to rub salt into the wounds, rub, rub salt to the wounds, Senator Brandis, the uh, spin that's been put out by CSIRO management, uh, the spin that's been put out by CSIRO management is that the science is in, we need to focus on mitigation and adaption. Well, guess what? The committee has heard 100% of evidence from the most venerable scientists in the world that their work is used for mitigation and adaption. So either someone has got this completely wrong, completely wrong, uh, or uh, it's complete BS, one of the two. But either way, it doesn't sit well with uh, an organisation, one of Australia's proudest organisations, which was noted in Senate Question Time we're celebrating today. Uh, this needs to be fixed. This kind of process can't occur again. And the damage that's been done to CSIRO is going to take a long time to reverse and to change. The best way to do that, Minister, is to be fully compliant with the order of production of documents so we can assess this process and to reverse these cuts to the best climate scientists in the world and, in fact, increase your funding to this critical area of public good science. And I do really worry about the message we're sending to young scientists, to early career scientists, that the only science that actually matters in this country is science that generates short-term commercial returns. Because a lot of these scientific projects are 20, 30 years in duration, and they are absolutely critical to how we manage risk in our economy, uh, in our climate and in our communities. In fact, the value, the value impact of this work will go into the trillions of dollars, the hundreds of billions of dollars, and it's very short-sighted that a process has been put in place that we can't get information on as to how these scientists were even valued in terms of their contribution and how this decision was made. And I'm looking forward to getting that information as soon as possible.